What is up YouTube, back at again with another YouTube video today and today I'm going to be talking about my top 5 summer baits to use for bass. So, we'll make this short, make this sweet, and we'll get right to the point, okay? So, my first bait I'm going to use, I'm going to talk about early morning, so say post spawn bass when they're on beds. So post spawn bass through that summer, any time in the summer, but mostly early summer, when the shad spawn is happening, early morning bite, I will go with some type of a top water bait. This right here is a little sexy shad and um, strike king spook. It's probably about like the four inch, three inch size spook. Throw that early mornings around a uh, riprap like the dam, uh, docks a lot next to the dock. Anywhere a hard bottom is where the shad spawn is going to happen, that top water is going to be amazing. So, whether that be a spook, a whopper plopper, even a frog, um, anything um, top water is going to be good. Mine is a spook sometimes if it's a little chop on the water I like to throw a, a, a whopper plopper get some more action but this um, spook is going to be really nice so throw that on, along the hard bottom during the summertime where the shad are spawning or even throughout the whole summer it's great early morning late late evening bait so bait number two I'm going to be talking about, I want to start on the bottom, so start from the top, now we're going to start on the bottom. So, my second bait is going to be an 8 inch, or like a 7, 8 inch, or a 10 inch uh, worm, whether that be one of these, a Berkeley um, Power Worm, this color, my top favorite colors in that. It's going to be a June Bug, Blue Flake, or any type of natural colors. They're going to work really good. I like to throw this on a Texas rig. Uh, I'll, depending how deep I fish, I'll, um, I like to go with the tungsten weight. Probably, it just depends, like a 3.8 or 1 fourth ounce. Um, even maybe a 316 ounce weight, depending on how deep I am and how windy it is. It all depends on that. And I like to throw on the 10 inch. I like to throw a 5 aught worm hook. If I'm fishing a 7 or an 8 inch worm, I like to go 4 aught uh, worm hook. Uh, my worm hook that I use is a Gamagatsu worm hook. I just feel like that's the best hook for worm worms. And then I use basically Gamagatsu for pretty much everything. So that is a really good uh, hook to use. Um, use that, uh, fish those worms along um, the dams, points, rock points, um, brush piles even. I mean anything around structure and use big worms, you're going to catch them. So, Enough said of that. Bait number three. I'm gonna go with a zoom trick worm. The zoom trick worm. I like to throw watermelon red, green pumpkin. I like to throw natural colors. I even jump up to a uh, a June bug. A June bug in the zoom trick worm is really good. Uh, for the summertime bass, even like throughout the whole year, the zoom trick worm is good. Just those pressured bass, if your lake's pressured, uh, get fished a lot, you know, a shaky head on that trick worm, it should be really good. If it's really pressured, you throw a Texas rig, uh, I believe it's like a baby finesse, or I can't, it's a finesse trick worm, I think that's what it's called, but. It's instead of like this 8 inch worm, trick worm, whatever, it's like 4 inches. It's super uh, finessey. And, um, but if 
even if your leg's not pressured, that uh, finesse trick worm is really good. But I like to throw down the shaky head. I pop up the sh picture of a shaky head if y'all don't know what I'm talking about right here. I like to throw that depending how deep I'm fishing. I go from a 1 4 ounce. I usually fish 316 for almost anything uh, for a uh, for a shaky head. I like to go to color black on the head. I just feel like I have more fish hookups, even like tungsten uh, bullet weights. I like to go black so it's less silver. But um, I think it just catches more fish and up my odds. But if I'm fishing, say about 15 feet, I like to go to that one fourth. Uh, maybe that um, half ounce, possibly a three eighths. It just depends on the body of water you're fishing. But mostly a one fourth does pretty much good for me. If I'm going a little shallower, um, like uh, you know, fishing around docks to eight, ten feet, I go to three sixteenths. But you just want that fall rate to be good when that trick worm's get going, and even when you give it a hop. Or even when you're dragging it, you just want that uh, good rock, uh, excuse me, you want good contact, say you're fishing rocks or just the bottom. But my, that's the end for number three. Number four, I'm gonna actually use a, uh, a jig. I'm gonna use a jig where that's um, uh, a football head jig or a casting jig head where I'm uh, casting them along the uh, docks but a football jig head or uh, track team makes a, actually a uh, structured jig head uh, on the head it's kind of it's kind of like a I believe it's like a if I had to explain it probably like a diamond kind of but it's kind of hard to explain but that goes through really good through uh, brush piles. I fish the jig uh, on uh, brush piles, get that through there. I fish it with the rod tip facing upwards, kind of just drag it. And once I go over the, the limb, let it fall in there, fill the bite, and then I'll just keep working over each limb in the brush pile. But that, that Strike King uh, structure head, I believe that's what it's called, that jig. Um, works really good when fishing brush piles, even fishing deep on even rocky points and everything like that are good uh, for fishing jigs. But I don't really choose a jig for fishing on rocks. Sometimes I do, depending on the scenario. But brush pile fishing jigs work really good. Um, I get to a uh, line type and rod types at the end, but just going through the base pretty quick. I won't make this too long video for y'all, but enough said with that. Number five, my last bait I like to use is going to be a crankbait. Okay? Whether that's a deep diving crankbait like that, I believe this is a uh, this is a 6XD. So that dives, like, I believe it's like 12 feet. I might be wrong. 10, 12 feet. But a deep diving crankbait a medium diving crankbait or even a square bill all work good in the summertime even throughout the whole uh, year but crankbaits like this you fish them over brush piles you can fish them on rocks rip wrap just I mean you can throw crankbaits anywhere but you're gonna have the most success of hitting them rocks hard bottom brush piles, uh, any kind of structure, anytime there's anything where rocks hard, that has a hard bottom, brush piles, any type of structure, a crankbait, grinding that on the bottom, it's going to get you bites. It doesn't matter what time, what, what time of the year, it's going to give you bites. Um, So speaking of that, I'm gonna go with line. Uh, what size line I use, what kind of rod I use, and what gear ratio I use. With the crankbaits, 
if I'm trying to really get it down there, I will go with a 12 pound uh, fluorocarbon. That's about the highest I go. Sometimes I go 10 if I'm really trying to get those deep diving crankbaits down. I don't usually go 8, but that's very rarely. But I always go, I always go 12. And if I have the downsize, I'll go 10 on the the crankbaits. I use a medium. I like to use a seven foot to a seven six uh, medium action rod bait casting. And then the gear ratio depends if I'm trying to burn it. I will actually go with a higher gear ratio, like a seven. But I like to stay with the six in most um, scenarios. I'm gonna move down the list where I started from. So uh, number four, I believe I might be wrong, but I think I had the jig at number four. But a jig, it just really depends how heavy of a jig you're fishing, where you're fishing the jig. It just truly depends. You either go from a medium heavy or you go all the way to a heavy. Um, and the line, it, it could vary. Where it could be 15, 12, 17, 20, 25 pound fluorocarbon. Get to the bottom. It just really depends how heavy the cover is. But that's the type of line and rod I would like. Um, for the rod again, I'm fishing. I like to stay in that seven foot range, no longer the seven six. But for the casting, uh, the bait caster, on the gear ratio, I like to go as high as I can to eight, very rarely seven and a half range. But I like to be in the eight uh, gear ratio range. So, with that said, number three, the zoom trick worms when I'm fishing the shaky heads. I like to go pre finesse on it, maybe eight pounds if I fish at clear water, but I like to stay with the 10 and the 12 pound test. Um, if I'm fishing dirty water, stained water, I like to go 12. If I'm fishing in the middle, 10. If I'm fishing clear, 8. Just depends. If the bass are finicky, I'll downsize from there. But it truly really depends on the body of water you, uh, you're fishing. But I like to go with the spinning reel on that. Sometimes I throw a bait casting setup. I would throw a medium. You can even throw a medium light. But I always throw a medium action rod, about seven foot, and then I'll go with a high gear ratio. I like to stay mid, probably a seven and a half gear ratio, seven to five gear ratio for that. So bait number two. The power worm, or just a worm in general. Um, I like to throw. You throw that. I I usually throw 15 pound test for that. You even jump up 17 to 20. I can do any, anywhere from 15 to 17 pound test. But that is a really good line from 15 to 17. Some people throw 20, but I like to. I usually throw 15 for any of my bottom baits usually where I'm fishing creature baits or uh, throwing worms. I like to stay in that 15 pound test. 17 works perfect too. I use 17 for the longest, but I feel like 15 is good. Um, if you get in a structure, 15, you do have a higher chance of breaking it off with that lower line. But 15, I've always used it, and I like that better than throwing the 17 and 20 pound test. But and those four, all fluorocarbon, by the way. And then on the worm, you throw, I like to throw a medium heavy. Some people throw a heavy to fish if they're throwing big, big, big worms. But I like to stay in the seven foot range. Every, all these rods can be seven foot. But I like to throw um, a seven foot range and a medium heavy for that uh, worms. But that number one bait, that top water. So say a spook or whopper plopper, any type of top water, you want to throw monofilament or braid. I don't really throw braid unless I'm throwing a frog. If I'm throwing a frog, it depends from it depends how thick I'm 
fishing that frog, you know, like lily pads or rocks. It just depends how thick the cover is. I like to go anywhere from 50 no, and no higher than 60. You can downsize, but uh, personally, I'll throw anywhere from 50 to 65 pounds for it. But on most of my top water, uh, I'm throwing monofilament and it's gonna be 12 pound monofilament. I just always throw 12 pound monofilament, always worked good for me, got great action, but always throw that 12 pound monofilament. But that was basically to conclude the video. Uh, hopefully y'all like my top five summer baits. Hopefully y'all learn a few things. And if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. If you're not yet subscribed, subscribe so you stay tuned for my latest videos and all my content so you don't miss a bit of action. And um, we got more content coming out. Summer's coming. I'm gonna have a whole bunch of fish content, a whole bunch of reviews, tips, everything you think of catching cooks. I have a catch cook coming out. Stay tuned for that one. But subscribe so you don't miss any of that. And um, that's gonna include the video. If you have not yet, check out the pre-spawn, the spawn, and the post-spawn top five baits and um yeah basically include the video hopefully y'all like it and um stay tuned for another luck is unlimited